Hi, how's it going? This is President of Hollywood for YouTube, back with a Halloween video for you guys and gals. You know, somebody asked, what do you think of the character Keanu Williams from Halloween 5? I'm here to give another character retrospective. I think I've given like one or two of these already of Tina. But I think it's important to discuss the character in the context of how, what the character is being used for, really. In every way, the character is being used sort of the way Alinda Vanderklok was being used, sort of the way Annie Brackett was being used. This is not a character who's meant to live. You know, you can get into the fate ideology if you'd like, because it is Tina's fate to die by the hands of Michael Audrey Myers. I've often talked about character differences and character likes. What does Annie and Linda have in common with Tina. Well, they both, all three think about their boyfriend. All three care about their boyfriend. But all three also care about somebody else. Where Annie and Linda care about Lori, Tina cares about Jamie. Now, the biggest difference is Tina, as far as we know, Tina Williams never knew Lori Strode. Annie and Linda were best friends with Lori Strode. Because um, Tina is a lot younger. Tina is younger than out there. She's, like, uh, I would say in her 20, probably like 18, 19, 20, you know, give or take. Also, what do they, what do all these characters have in common with Lori? They're all stalked by Michael Myers. Same thing. It's the same thing they have in common with Rachel Carruthers, who dies in Halloween 5. They're all stalked by Michael Myers. The diff, you know, when you get into the difference of what a final girl is and what isn't a final girl. A final girl, to me, the definition of a final girl in Halloween is somebody who is stalked by Michael Myers and lives to tell about it. That's what separates Lori from Aunt Annie and Linda. And it's not the only thing, but it's the biggest thing in general here. When you look at the little stuff, and I'll get this all leads back to Tina, I assure you, that Tina herself is not a final girl. Tina, when we meet her, we're meeting a girl who has never experienced Michael Myers. Here's the thing. When we first meet Lori, Annie, and, and Linda, have they experienced Michael Myers at that point in time of ours? No, they hadn't. Uh, they're, they're going to. <laughs> they're going to. Um, uh, two out of the three, you know, don't survive. So, also, too, you know, Annie and Linda, like Tina, are focused on other things. They're focused on their boyfriends. They're focused on getting a piece of action, if you will, getting laid. So is Tina. Tina's focused on getting laid, too. That's, you know, the, the classic rule of, of heroin, if you will, or, you know, the female final girl, is you got to be a virgin. Now, there's a difference, big difference with Halloween 1 and Halloween 5 when you get into that rule. That rule is sort of broken because... You know, Rachel Carruthers dies in 89. As far as I know, Rachel Carruthers was still a virgin. Uh, um, you know, let's, just saying. Um, so there's that. That that rule was still alive and well in John's Halloween. Annie and Linda were not virgins. Lori was. And keep in mind, too, there's, there's hefty conversations with these characters that I'll uh, acquire, where Annie and Lori have a conversation about her babysitting, because Annie says, I swear, you, you, all you do is babysit. You, you never get out. You, have a, you must have a small fortune stash to win babysitting. She goes, well, guys think I'm too smart. And this is after Lori had seen Michael, you know, she didn't know it was Michael come out from behind a bush and he was standing there and he walks back behind the bush. Um, and Annie tells Lori, well, I don't, I think you're a wacko. <laughs> um, you know, because now you're seeing men behind bushes. 
<laughs> um, Lord, I, and at that moment, when you think about characters, maybe, maybe Annie is just chalking this up. Girl, girl you're just, you're just horny. <laughs> just, you, you need to get laid. <laughs> maybe that's Annie's mindset. Um, could be, right? So with Linda, with Linda Vanderclaw, I would say that Tina is a little more like Linda than what Annie, because they're both goofballs a bit. Now, the difference is Tina isn't drunk. Linda is. Linda is. I always presume with the beer cans coming out of the, the van that Linda and Bob are already intoxicated. Um, <laughs> um, so there's there's that. Um, are there deaths differently? Are there deaths different? Yes. I'll get into that here in a moment. So, the view you really get from from the standpoint of Michael stalking Annie and Michael stalking Linda and Michael stalking Lori and Michael stalking Atina Williams. What are they before they're before some of them are killed? Not all of them are killed. I mentioned Lori in this conversation for a reason. And I'll mention, I, I'll include Rachel too. They're all potential victims. Now, whether they, we all know what's going to happen to them, but when you are watching the movie for the first time, if you've never seen these movies, their potential, unless something, their potential victims, could they have survived? Sure. Does fate allow them to survive? No, because of the circumstances they're put into. That they've made choices that send them down a certain road. Now, whether they die or not is also a part of fate. Because think about Annie Brackett for a second. Here's a woman who is on the phone with Lori Strode saying about, telling Lori how, about how she got her date with, with, uh, God, I forget his name now. <laughs> um, what's his name? Oh, God, I'm going to kick myself. Um, another go. Ben Tramer. Uh, she goes, because Annie tells uh, Lori, hey, I spoke to Ben Tramer, and he got real excited when I told him you had the hogs for him. Oh, you know, Annie, you didn't. And Lori's, well, why don't you go out with him for God's sakes? And this is the difference between somebody like Annie and Lori. Annie is very straightforward. Lori is very shy, right? But this is also a part of why Annie is getting killed, too. Annie is so straightforward and focused on her boyfriend. She isn't... Now, she's not alone. Lori... Lori now, she's not alone because Linda doesn't pay attention to being stalked, either. Um, Lori did. Now... Does Tina, and I'll come back to that. Rachel didn't. That's what gets Rachel killed. Rachel wasn't paying attention that she was being stalked, and then she's ultimately killed. There are signs she's being stalked, and she she gets curious, but by the time she goes down that road, it's too late. That's another factor of not being a final girl, that you are killed because you weren't paying attention. Annie, you know, takes makes a deal with Lori Strode that hey, if you if you watch Lindsay, I'll talk to I'll talk to Ben Tramer. Okay, deal. She gets ready. She gets to the car. She she gets to the car. Her car's locked. No key. She walks back, gets the keys, comes back to the car. Car's unlocked. She gets inside, sees the car's all fogged up. Wait a second. And she's coming to the realization she. Oh, wait, I had to go back and get the keys. And by that time, Michael's hand is around her throat, and then he slashes her throat and kills her. Linda Vanderflog's death, she, again, she's intoxicated. Her and her boyfriend are making are making on the couch. Michael's stalking them. The phone rings. Linda answers it, and they find out that Lindsay, Lindsay Wallace is next door as Lori's calling to find out what time to put her to bed. What time? What time? She didn't know. Danny never told her, and she said she never. Linda tells Lori, "No one's here. 
and she was all she probably stopped off someplace. Stopped off means she probably stopped off and had sex someplace with her boyfriend. And so after this phone call, Linda and Bob go upstairs and make love, have sex. Okay. This is all going to lead back to Tina Williams. Because what you have to understand what's going on here is we often focus on Lori Shore because she is a survivor. Focus on the non-survivors here for a second. What's going on with them? They're being stalked and they're not they're not just not paying attention to what's going on. They don't know somebody's watching them because they have forgotten about what's happened earlier. They just put it out of their mind. It's no big deal. And really, a lot of this gets made in the car ride over when Annie says, it's probably Mr. Sims. Because Lori says, there was somebody in Mr. Sims' yard watching. It's probably Mr. Sims. Okay. Later on, we know Annie's death. Linda's death is very interesting. After they have sex, hey, get me a beer. And Bob goes downstairs. He hears breathing. He says, you know, Linda, you asshole. Annie, you know, he thinks it's Linda or Annie. That Annie has come back and then she's pulling this prank or Linda's pulling this cane downstairs and pulling a prank. No, it's Michael. We have just gotten viewpoints of Annie and now Bob. What do they have in common? They're some they're stalked and killed by Michael. We're getting the story of how victims are being killed by Michael. We're getting a story of viewpoint of this is how Michael stalks his victims and how he focuses on them. He goes upstairs, put, puts or puts the ghost sheet on, goes upstairs to Linda who thinks that's her boyfriend. Calls over to Lori. Well, this is going nowhere, you know. I, I need to find out what's, where's Annie, you know. He comes up, starts choking her with the phone cord as Lori answers the phone. Um, Lori thinks it's some it's Annie pulling another prank because a prank got pulled on her before, and you know Linda is dead. Linda dies from strangulation by phone cord. So where does this leave Tina? Sent Tina or sorry Tina Williams. Okay, post Rachel Carruthers' death, because Rachel gets stalked. She finally. When she starts to finally really pay attention after the squirrel is recovered and Max is barking at Ed, at Jamie's room, she's creeped out once again in Jamie's room. She shouldn't. She should just run. Why does she go in Jamie's room? She goes in Jamie's room because she's curious. Curiosity killed what? The cat. Where there's a difference between Rachel's curiosity too and what what Lori's curiosity was. It's different scenarios. It's, and it's also, when you look at 1978, Michael, Michael was a very inefficient killer in the first movie. You could say, well, he kills Lori's friends pretty fast. Yeah, but look how different those situations are compared to what Lori's situations are. They're in what I would call confined spaces. Annie's in a car. Bob is in a kitchen opening a closet door that he doesn't know some that he th he thinks one of his friends are hiding behind. Those are situational kills. Those are also fake kills. There's no getting out of those. There's no getting out of it. Linda is in a bedroom. There's no getting out of it. That and she turns her back. Now there's really no getting out of it. Rachel goes into Jamie's room. She's on her knees. There's no getting out of it. Tana Williams falls under a very interesting category here. Because how she dies isn't exactly how our friends die here. How these, how Lori's friends, how some of Lori's friends die, and how Rachel Carruthers dies. Because I can't con conclude Rachel's a friend of Lori just because Rachel was babysat by Lori Strode. 
Tina. Tina comes to Rachel's house thinking Rachel went to her parents' cabin. Records playing, there's no music. She sees that the house is totally empty. Max is still outside. She just assumes Rachel left. Rachel was torn between leaving and staying. This isn't a mistake by Tina because why should she assume anything else? Tina is not obsessed. It's another thing. Tina is not Sam Loomis. She's not obsessed with Michael Myers. Tina is also not Rachel Carruthers nor Stroke. She's never had an experience with Michael Myers. They did. Until this movie. Tina's going to have experience with Michael and meet her fate's end. But her fate's end is a tad different than what Annie's and Linda's are. It's situational too, but it's situational in a different way. It's not that she's trapped in a room because she's killed in the woods. She's killed in very open space. But she's also killed because she chooses to get in front of the knife that is intended for Jamie Lloyd. She dies saving Jamie's life. It's a hell of a character. But it's also a character, too, that is like Annie and like Linda and like Lori and like Rachel are, is stalked as well. Again, all these characters, the biggest thing they have in common... Because not all of them were killed, but all of them were stalked by Michael. That's something people get lost in, too, when you're talking the Halloween franchise. We often forget that Michael stalks his victims before killing them. And the difference between final girl and not final girl girl are determined by, yes, fate, but also situation. What's their lifestyle, too? Tina is not a virgin. T Tina is focused on her boyfriend. Also, Tina is focused on Jamie, too. She wants to see Jamie. This causes a, a rift between her and her boyfriend. She knows it causes a rift. This isn't the first time they've had this rift, and you can tell by that conversation she's She's yelling at who she thinks is her boyfriend in the car. It's not her boyfriend. It's Michael Audrey Myers. Tina Williams, who thinks she's in the car with her boyfriend, had felt like earlier in that fi same film, had felt when she came out the Carruthers household, had felt like somebody was watching her. Somebody was. Michael was watching her from inside the window. He's looking out at her. She turns around. There's nobody there. But she felt something. Michael's stalking her outside. He follows her to where Jamie is. He then follows her to the, the store. The store where uh, Spence, you know, Spence's uh, boyfriend works at. I think his name is Spence. One or the other. You get what I'm saying. Michael ends up dying... Her boyfriend ends up dying because Michael is stalking all of them. He's not just stalking her anymore. He's stalking all of them. He's going to, at that moment, when Michael is looking, is watching this guy pull up to where Jamie is, he knows already he's going to kill at least the three of them. And when he sees the other guy, he knows, I'm killing all of them. He's made that choice. There's no... It's the same sort of aspect of Terminator. There's no talking Michael out of this, okay? <laughs> There's no conversation that leads to a happy ending here. Uh, maybe maybe a revolver and some bullets lead to a somewhat happy ending, if you're lucky. Um, but still. He stalks them. He kills Michael first. He puts the brute mask on. Puts the black gloves on. Tina does feel there's some creepiness with him when she kisses him on the side of the cheek on the mask. Like she says, creepy. Like, 
Then she just, when he drives off, he she's like, oh, okay, I, I see what this is. This is just a silent treatment again. And you can tell the actress who plays Tina Williams is playing it that way. This is just another argument they're going to have. Here's a news slash. Speaking as a married man, I've been married 20 plus years. Okay? Couples, married or not, often fight over the same thing. They often fight over things they've already fought about. Because it's a constant in their lives. If Jamie is a constant in Tina's life, which she is, this isn't the first fight they've had over it. Yes, I get, that's not Tina's boyfriend. Tina doesn't know that. You, the audience, we, the audience, do. That's the terror. Because here's, here's a woman who is now trapped inside a moving car with the shape. What's he going to do? How's he going to kill her? He going to send her through the fucking windshield? We don't know. She gets out. It's like, oh, Jesus. Like, you can exhale after that fucking car ride when they stop to get cigarettes. Or she, he lets her out. And he puts on the other mask. And then the cops, you know, because of, because of Jamie, the cops are coming. Tina's fate is not meant to die in the car. It's meant to die saving Jamie Lloyd's life. And I think that's what the writers are trying to get across. Is Tina a main character? No. Here's a newsflash. Neither are Annie and Linda. That's another difference between a final girl. A final girl is, yes, fate, but it's also situation. It's the situation you end up getting put in or you put yourself in. Think of Tina's situation. Who does she care for? Jamie and Rachel. When Rachel's not around, what does Tina realize? Okay, I need to be the one visiting Jamie if Tina's not going to be here. Or sorry, if Tina realizes she needs the one be, be the one visiting Jamie if Rachel's not going to be here. She wants to visit her. Her boyfriend's against it. Her boyfriend gets 86 by Michael, who, who he's been... Again, Michael's been stalking these people. That's it. You also get what, the same thing you got in One Mutant in Five. It's a tale of a killer stalking his potential victims. That's what that is. That's what makes Tina Williams' journey so interesting. Because you're getting a more, a bit more stock with shared than what you did in the original. Now you can say, well, what's the point of telling me this? You sort of told me this in one because of how different it looks. It looks different because it is. The situation isn't exactly the same. Who's Tina babysitting? She isn't. Is she focused on a boyfriend? Yes. Does she realize that boyfriend's dead? No. Newsflash. Neither did Linda Vanderklog. Linda Vanderklog did not know that was Michael Myers under a fucking ghost sheet. Tina Williams did not realize that was her boyfriend, was not her boyfriend underneath the brute mask and a man wearing black gloves. Michael's hands are burnt. That's why he's wearing the gloves. The other Michael, Tina's dipshit boyfriend, his hands weren't burnt. If she saw the hands, she could have gotten away still. Yeah, he could have grabbed her by the hair. Sure, again, situational. We don't get that. We don't get the grabbing of the hair. But but that's because the gloves are on Michael's hand. They're black gloves. He's hiding the burn marks to trick her. It works. It's the same thing as the ghost sheet. If he takes the ghost sheet off standing at the fucking entrance, think about what could have happened. Do you think, you think it, uh, Linda is stupid enough to think her boyfriend will wear a costume like that? I don't. Um, again, victims of Michael, yes, do depend on fate, but it also depends on the situation. Annie wasn't say Annie Annie in a sense saves saves Lindsay by sending her to Lori. 
I give Annie that. Tina more directly saves Jamie because she takes a knife that it's in, that is intended for Jamie Lloyd. I enjoy the character of Tina Williams a lot because it's a much different. It's not necessarily a complete night and day difference, but it's enough of a difference to make you interested in that character and how really one in five have this keenly. How really. Michael stalks his victims and also tricks them at the same time. What's the title? The trick is to stay alive, right? In the original Halloween, that's one of the titles. That applies to every Halloween movie you watch. Because if the trick is to stay alive, it's the killer who's going to trick you into getting you into killing you. And he does that in 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 the franchise. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this Tina Williams retrospective. Have a good day.